Greetings, Kerbonauts. This is Kerbal Space Program. I'm Bob Fitch, and here we have episode number nine of the Gateway Project, where we are going to bring up the Destiny module. I'm just waiting here for the orbit to cross over mission control, since I'm on that inclined orbit, and then I can make my launch. Now, of course, I could launch anytime I wanted, and I could go equatorial, whatever I want, but I'd have to be willing to pay the cost of the inclination change if I were to do that. So my launches are all based on that orbit. When the orbit goes over, that's when I launch. Now technically, the right way to do that, and probably what they do in the real world, is you wait for the orbit and your, your target to cross over at exactly the same time, and that way you minimize that cost of uh, the launch plus the inclination change and the actual rendezvous cost you, you just do it all together and it becomes cheaper now in the real world that matters me I have an infinite budget the people of Kerbin have decided that this is the most amazing project they've ever heard of and they're all backing it except of course for the zealots led by Joseph Kerman who by the way we still haven't heard from since uh, the incident where we disciplined one of his men so it looks like that worked so I haven't actually been trying to match up my orbit and the KSS at the same time, but in this particular launch, it just so happened that it was passing over. And so I make an attempt here to go for a surface-to-orbit rendezvous, and frankly, this is probably the best one I have ever done in all of my Kerbal Space Program playing. Oh, it was so good. It Look how close we are right there. I'm coming in at like nine kilometers direct from the surface. Oh, so good. So much fun. So we're getting close to the KSS here. But first, I have a little bit of news. Uh, last episode, we were putting up an ANSAT, and it was supposed to scan the skies looking for strange anomalies and just looking all over Kerbin and the moon and Minmus. Well, it just so happens that we may have detected some strange spatial or temporal anomalies there uh, very similar to the ones that actually brought the plans for the ISS that we are making into the KSS here in the first place. I think in a future episode we may need to go take a look over there and see if there is some new plan for something or what that temporal rift might be doing. Destiny is still making its approach to the KSS here so let me tell you how it's supposed to be constructed. So what we're going to do is undock the PMA and move it away from Unity so that Destiny can slide up in between them and then the PMA will go back onto Destiny this time. We're getting closer and I'm noticing that as I continue adding parts I'm still getting a tiny bit of lag but I think maybe in the next episode I may be able to address that. Destiny's almost here. I haven't really said much about what it is yet so let me give you some details. In our dimension the Real Destiny module was launched on the Space Shuttle Atlantis back in February of 2001 and was the United States' first permanent orbital research station that they'd had up since 1974 when I was just still a little kid. In fact, that last station, the Skylab that was put in in like 1973 or somewhere around there, that was probably the single most influential thing that made me get really interested in space flight and space stations and satellites and things like that because when they deorbited that in 1979 I was only 10 years old and uh, it was probably the most amazing thing I'd ever heard of. So here we are ready to dock the Destiny but uh, there's one little problem. I completely forgot that there was the pipe endpoints from the Kerbal Attachment System still connected up here between the Z1 truss and the PMA connected to the Unity module and of course Destiny has to fit in that spot so Bob's got to go out and do what he loves best. He's getting up there and doing an EVA and pulling that Kerbal attachment a pipe endpoint back off. Oh, and, and I had somebody ask me, why are you putting a pipe endpoint on something that already has a connection? Because that just creates like a docking thing. Well, yeah, totally true. This is all for flavor. It's eye candy. I'm just trying to simulate that there are real connections uh, that, that would need to exist in a case like that. And pipes and wires and whatever might be going through that thing. I don't know what's going through it, but, but I'm sure something important is going through there so we need to disconnect that and pull the PMA off now in the real world of course probably space shuttles grabbing the PMA and moving it over to the side of the unity module and just docking it there temporarily oh hello Bob apparently he doesn't like holding on to the ladders I put him on the ladder and he just falls off and starts floating away but we'll get back to him later come on Bob get back over here and hold on to the ladder this time 
I'm not quite sure why, but what keeps happening with these parts that I've welded is uh, I slide on them. Let's see, see, so I don't know why that's happening, and uh, maybe I'm just going to have to do something like put some command seats out there. I don't know, or uh, maybe some real ladders that I don't weld. But for whatever reason, my kerbals slide. So here we're looking at me trying to dock up with the PMA, and I think I may have put the docking node on backward, so it wouldn't dock up. So I release it and off it floats away. Oh dear, nobody tell Bill. Bill is going to be livid when he finds out that uh, we just left some orbital debris up there. Well, that's okay. We're going to flip around to the other side. I do have that good docking node and we'll bring that PMA back. We know that it has a good docking node, so that's okay. Nobody tell Bill. Currently, Bill's in some training. Uh, I think it's anger management. He's been having a couple issues around the base, so you know we'll, we'll, we just won't tell him because the last thing we, you want with a guy in anger management is to tell him that you just left some orbital debris when that's his one requirement for working on the entire station. Okay, so unfortunately, I docked the Destiny uh, wrong. That little docking node there on the top, that needs to be pointed up. And then the other one is for a platform of instruments that's supposed to come later. But that's okay. We'll just de-dock and spin it a little. No one will know. Now before we have Bob get back out here and hook up that Z1 truss and put the pipe endpoints over here and connect them into Destiny, why don't we take a look at what the Destiny looks like in the vehicle assembly building. Hey, here we are taking down the Destiny module so we can get a chance to see what's inside there. Now this uses, like many of my recent things, the KLS-6 subassembly that I've created here for this launcher. I didn't need any boosters, it's not that heavy. Uh, we'll just take that off, you've seen that before. And you have seen before these little tugs that I stick on here, so I'm not going to look at the tug, although the interesting thing about this one is that in order for it to be able to manipulate uh, the P uh, PMAs, yeah. Um, I put a regular docking node on here, and then I put an extra docking node, and I figured that when I was done using this one, I would then decouple this and be able to get rid of it. Uh, I don't know exactly what I was thinking, though, because that would cause orbital debris, and Bill would get very upset about that. But uh, that's what I did at the time, and it seemed like a good idea. So there is a docking node on the top and the bottom, and we have some strut connectors here from the Kerbal Attachment System mod that will allow me to strut that later to another part that I'm adding. And I have strut connectors here and here as well, and some lights on the outside. There's a little docking port that's actually built into the Destiny module that is going to be used for one of the other trusses that hasn't been uh, sent up yet. We'll bring that up in the future. And then this one is for a little parts module that's supposed to get docked to the side. And we'll talk about that in a future episode. Now, if I'm not mistaken, the rest of this is, uh, let's grab a mech jeb here to see the part count. Two part, no, uh, yeah, two parts. So there's this and there's mech jeb. If I take that off, this is it. So you can see that this has the science bay thing, the new science bay in 0.23, and it's got some other parts that are all sort of baked into it. Uh, since I haven't really got a lot to talk about on how the Destiny module here is set up, why don't we use this as a chance to go into my 0.22 mod that I've been using to actually do all of the part merging. Wonderful! Here we are in a 0.22. 2.2 install of Kerbal Space Program, where we are looking at the Destiny module still in its raw form. All of the parts are here totally untouched by anything. This is before they get welded, so you can see everything that went into that. Uh, you might also notice that that is a 023 science module. Well, I just copied the science module, dra dragged it, dropped it right into the folder with 022. It loaded up just fine. Obviously, it doesn't do any of the science stuff if I were to uh, try to play 22 with it, uh, but visually, it does what it needs to do. It looks like a science module. So that's what I took. Uh, one of the reasons why I took that one is I, I think it actually looks a bit like the real Destiny in some ways. 
and is very close to the correct dimensions as well. If we use my little trick for measuring things, let's find the one meter long strut that I use here. So this is just about one, two, three, four, five meters tall. Now, if we go and grab the docking ring that is going to be on the top and bottom of this, then you'll see that by the time we put those two docking rings on the top and bottom, it's actually going to be about five meters tall. Uh, that's really cool because the real destiny is about 8.4 meters long and 4.2 meters wide. And if we scale this using the 60% scale that I use, then that puts it at 2.5 meters wide, which is exactly how wide this is, and about five meters tall. So this is the same dimensions. You know I'm trying to get all the same dimensions for everything. Now the next step in welding is I have the add-on, it's putting a button up here, and I just grab the root part and I drag it on there, and then I can give it whatever name I want to. And that's the name of the folder, and then this, would be the name of the actual object. And I have been putting everything into the pods tab so that it's easy to find later. I just hit save and there it is. I have a new welded part. So now that is going to show up as one thing. When this finally loads back up again, it now shows up over here in my list and it's one part. Now I was talking about the root part as the one that I was grabbing. And if you don't know what the root part is, it's the first part that you place. So if I have nothing out here and I get something like say this capsule from the AIES mod, and I'm not gonna worry about decouplers, I'm just going to grab fuel to demonstrate this. So I take something like that and I start attaching fuel tanks underneath it. And then maybe I put an engine under there and suppose I go and I get a strut. Now this is where I see some people doing the wrong thing sometimes. So let's find a strut in here that we can attach. Let's use the regular one from the stock game. So let's say we do this and we put one on each side and we're going to add, let's say we add, want to add boosters because you know you gotta have boosters on a rocket, right? In fact, more boosters the better. So we'll take one of these and we'll put it on the side. Now imagine we get out there and we launch it and we see that it is unstable. And so we come back in here and we think, oh, I'm just gonna put another strut on here to help connect it together. That has absolutely no effect whatsoever on your rocket because it's like a tree. This is the root, this is the trunk. It goes down like that. And then this branch comes out here to the booster. But this branch doesn't go anywhere because you can only connect it at one point. And I connected it from here to here. That didn't do anything to connect this to this. They are not connected. You can tell what's connected by mousing over them. So this is connected to nothing. If I highlight this and grab that, you can see that it comes away without having affected that other piece at all. So let's fix that. And if I were to grab this, it comes away without being attached to the booster. So the booster is still there. So this doesn't do anything. If you want to actually be able to connect those together, you need struts, boosters and struts, something like this. Now, if you launch this rocket, it's going to spin because this is not lined up correctly. One little trick you can do to try and line things up is rotate it to be a kind of sideways and try to get it perfectly lined up. Make sure over here that you have your angle snap on so that it stays right in the middle. See how it's snapping. Then once you do that, move back over here to this side and find a place that looks like it's in the middle and then click. What's going to happen is it's going to cast a ray from here to here and wherever it intercepts, that's where the other endpoint is going to go. And so now that should be relatively very straight across. Getting back to welding, once I have welded it, there will be a config file for the part that will allow me to go in and modify things like its nodes and different traits about it. Usually it's averaging all the parts together and it doesn't really get them right and I have to do a pretty decent heavy amount of editing of these files. At the bottom of the part file will be things where I can look at stuff like its resources and different modules that are installed on it. And if I think a module doesn't belong, I can take it off, I can add new modules, I can modify the resources, give it something I think it needs, take away something I think it doesn't. And finally, I go out to the main map here 
and I do an Alt F12, I hit the debug reload all the assets, and then I hit Alt F12 to make that menu go away, and I can look at my parts. Alright, so Bob is out here getting his pipe endpoint hooked up to the Destiny module, providing that wonderful power and fluids, oxygen, and all the stuff that will make it habitable for the folks inside that station. Once he's got that complete, he can head back inside. Now, that isn't really how the real ISS goes back inside, but uh, that's a nice easy docking port for me, and I frankly don't want to go flying all up and down the station constantly. In the real world, they would have been using the space shuttle anyway. So right there, uh, my little pod thing is jittering all over the place. I think that comes from using remote tech. And uh, unless I select control from here, sometimes after I've undocked something, my remote tech will make it just jitter when I want to point it in a particular direction. And so I, I just uh, say control from here, and then I can go and deorbit our little tug, which I won't be needing that right now. I just like to keep the number of parts down. So with the Destiny module now docked up, this is what it would look like if we were looking at the real ISS at that point in history. And here is ours inside Kerbal Space Program. Ah, oh, I'm so happy with this so far. I'm really enjoying this project. Okay, well, it is time to go. Don't tell Bill that we left orbital debris. Until next time, I'll see you later, Kerbinauts.